In this video, we'll show you how to create documents using Python, Flask, and MongoDB. I will try to get into as many errors as possible so you learn how I debug those mistakes. If you have opened the terminal already, please close it and reopen it, just in case that the following commands are not going to be refreshed in your machine. So go to the terminal, and what you are going to write now is pip pip list. Maybe you get a yellow warning that is telling you to run a command. Copy that command and paste it and run it. If you want to do that, you don't have to. So go to your computer and create a new folder manually. I have already done that. So I will go somewhere in your machine. It doesn't matter where. So I have created this Mongo folder. Once you have created the Mongo folder, you can navigate to that path from the terminal. So you could just type CMD and this will open a new terminal pointing to the Flask folder because I'm not inside Mongo. You can also just open Mongo and type in the address bar CMD and this will open the terminal pointing directly to Mongo. However you want to do that, it is fine. So in this case, I will just close the other terminal and stay with this one. In this terminal, we are going to create a virtual environment inside the Mongo folder. At the moment, this folder is empty. You can see there are no files. You can also go and open VS Code. I can show you this here and from VS Code point to the Mongo folder. So go to File, Open Folder, and open this Mongo directory. Once you have done that, I have this side by side so you can see the differences. What we're going to do is we're going to install the virtual environment. And this is just a place where we can add packages and these packages will not affect other parts of our Python programs. So you run this by doing py. If you have different versions of Python, maybe you want to do py space dash three, that will be version three. But in my computer, I only have Python version three, so I just have to do py. Most likely you only have that version. If you have other versions of Python, just uninstall them. And now we're going to create a virtual environment. You have to have the flag dash m and then we say vm and we do a dot. This command just says Python, create a virtual environment inside this directory. If you watch other tutorials or other blogs that you read from, maybe they have a different way to do this. This is the way I have learned to do. As soon as I click enter, you can see that these folders appeared and now I am inside my virtual directory, my virtual environment. This is not enough to have it running as an environment because if I do a pip install now, I will be installing the packages globally. So I need to activate this environment as a virtual environment. If you look at the script folder, we have something called activate. So from the terminal, we say cd script. So we move to the scripts folder and then we just say activate. When I click on enter, you will see that this changes a little bit. So I just hit enter. And now you can see that I am inside the virtual environment called Mongo. And whatever I install via the pip command will be installed only inside this environment. It will not affect any other parts of the system. Since we're going to do Flask, we're going to install Flask. This runs and takes a little bit of time. Let me just put this right there so you can see the whole thing. And now we have a little warning. It says that I'm using pip version 19. However, version 20 is available. And this is the warning I was telling you about. Do you want to install it? We don't have to, but we can just copy this command. If you're not seeing that, it's because you already have the latest version. And then I will just paste it and click enter. 
this will install the latest version of pip it doesn't really affect your systems so now it has been successfully installed i am inside mongo scripts now i can just go out of mongo scripts go up to the just mongo folder and it's here where i'm going to be running my fa my flask application let's go ahead and create a file called server.py and the first thing we're going to do is a quick test we're just going to say print we're going to print the letter x save it and now we're going to run pi server.py remember that i went up one level to the mongo folder and now we see the letter x and that means that we're pointing to that folder correctly what we can also do is we can do a pip list again to see which libraries we have already installed and you can see that all these libraries were installed when i did pip install flask so this affects only the mongo virtual environment this is what we needed now we can go ahead and create our server to do this the first thing we need is to say that we're going to import from flask we're going to take flask and this is just the main file i save and right away always do this right away i will do a py server.py so you can see that i have a syntax error let me show you this and it's in line number one and this is exactly what I want to show you via my tutorials. Not just the perfect solution, but I want to show you how I solve the errors that I get into my application. So to solve this, you can see that I have a typo. It doesn't tell me much, it just says from, and then I will say import flask. Save it, and I run it right away again. So this is the advantage of running your application constantly. Once we have this, let me just make some spaces. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. I think there are 10 spaces in here. And what I will do is I will create just the server. So it's going to listen to a specific port and then I can just run it and test it from Postman. So let's do this. Let's create an instance of the app application and this will be Flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore save right away test it again i know this is annoying to test it constantly but it is the way to do an application you can see i have a typo i fix it you get the idea right one line at a time two lines three times at a time no more than that once i have this application set up i need to run the server so we just do the typical if name equals equals main you can use single quotes or double quotes it doesn't matter then we're going to run the application we're going to be listening to port 80 and we're going to set the debug to be true this is just to get error messages a little bit more understandable now let's run this again and well, now you can see that the server is running it's running on localhost and it is using port 80 some of you will have issues running this on port 80 so you can just change the port to a different port something that's not above 65535 and that will do the job so let's say 5555 if you want that will be okay save it again and this will restart automatically now this is not enough we need the route that will allow us to create documents in our Mongo database. So let's create a decorator. Let's call it app.route. And we are going to say that this is going to be the main entrance for a create users. We want to create users. And since we want to create the users, we're going to pass the data via a method. And the method that we're going to use is post. This is the syntax, so you say that the method is post, and this is plural because you can use several methods if you want, and then you will have to parse them accordingly. For now, we don't care about that. So what we need to do is just be able to create the user, and we have to define a function. 
let's call it create user. This function for now will just return the letter X. Save it. Hopefully this will restart automatically. And now we're going to go to Postman, create a new request. This is going to be a post. It's going to point to local post and the path will be over the slash users. Let's see, we get the letter X. Yes, we do. So it is working fine. Now that we have done that, let's go back to VS Code. And we need to always do the following. You need to connect to the database, first of all. And to do that, follow this advice. Always put the connection in a try except. Never forget this part. This will save you from a lot of mistakes. We're going to try to connect. But to connect to Mongo, we need a different package. We need to install. So therefore, we just control CC several times. And now we're going to install pip list, just so you see what we have so far. We're going to install a library called PyMongo. So we say pip install PyMongo. Takes a little bit of time. It gets the library. It is successfully installed. So if we do pip list again, you can see that I have PyMongo installed. Since this is installed, now I can do import PyMongo. Save it, and let's just move the import up there. Save it, and let's rerun the server. Now I have an error in the indentation, and that's fine. If you want to avoid these errors, just for testing, you can do pass and pass, and I think that will do the job, right? But you don't want this. Now we're going to connect to Mongo. So we're going to create a variable called Mongo, and this will be PyMongo, and we're going to use a Mongo client from this library, Mongo client. This can just be string a little bit there. This Mongo client takes several arguments. The host is going to be localhost. We're going to be using the port. The default port for Mongo is 27017. And I want to show you something that you will not find in most tutorials. What happens if the connection fails? Well, you can have the third argument, which is the server selection and I think it's called timeout in milliseconds. And this will be one millisecond of 10 milliseconds. You can just do one second, right? That will be 1000. So this will allow us to catch the exception and the exception will get in here. But this will not work automatically. To really have it working, you need to do the following. You need to point to the Mongo variable that we just created and then you need to get the server underscore info. This is going to trigger the exception if it cannot connect to the database, if cannot connect to DB. So that will do the exception. So if we get to the exception, we can just print ever cannot connect to DB. This is really important. You can actually post application. In this exception, you can send an email to the administrator saying that something is off with the database. Let's save it. Let's kill the server and rerun it again. Now this is working fine. It's connected to Mongo. So it is doing its job. If we go to Compass, we can just refresh. There's no database there. We're going to create a database there in a while. So now that we're connected, the next thing we need to do, once this client is pointing to Mongo, we are going to create a database variable. And this DB will be the connection to the Mongo client and the database that we want to use this database does not exist at the moment, so I'm just going to invent it. I will call it company. You can call this whatever you want. So I save it. This restarted automatically. Let's go to compass and reload. 
you don't see the database because I have not written anything to the database and therefore it's not displayed in Compass at the moment. So now we have to go to the route and start creating the user, the individual user here. To do this again, I cannot recommend enough, always a try except. And now we're going to just create an exception as ex. This will allow us to print the exception in the screen. If we get into issues, we can read the exception and debug it. So what we're going to try is first, let's take it one step at a time. I'm going to create a user and the user is just a JSON object. The name will be the letter A and the last name will be the letter B. Let's do AA as the last name. Eventually, this data will be replaced with the data that we passed from Postman. Whenever we have a connection to the database, we're going to get a response, and this will be the database, and we're going to insert inside the user's collection. This DB is pointing to company. So I'm pointing to company now. Then I say inside the company database, point to the collection called users, which does not exist at the moment, but this will create the collection automatically. And we're going to insert one, the user JSON object. The response will contain some data. And just for you to know what we want to send back, it will be nice to send the ID that Mongo gave to this user to the client. So to see what keys, to see what properties we can use from the DB response, we can always create a for loop. And then we're going to say for attribute in DB response. And then this is going to be using the dear keyword. So it shows me all the attributes and I will just print ATTR. So let's save it. Now we have restarted the server. Let's move to Postman and send the request. Now you can see what we get in here. We have the error. The view did not return a valid response. That's fine. I did not respond. I did not respond to the client correctly. And let's see, if we get an ID somewhere here. No, I don't see any ID. So let's try to debug this. Let's go back to VS Code. And this exception is not being triggered explicitly because I don't see it. So let's do a print. And I'm going to print some stars. And then I will just duplicate this to see if I get exception somewhere in between. Let's go to Postman, trigger this again. You can see I do not see the stars, nowhere to be seen. So this is really hard to debug. And what I do see, it is that I never got to these stars. And that's why I'm not triggering the exception. So what I'm seeing here is basically that this print ATTR is all this list that you see here, all these elements. The element that we need is the inserted ID. That's what's important for us. So we'll copy it. And now what I will do is I will comment this out. And I'm just going to create a print again. And this print will be the DB response dot the inserted ID. Save it. This reloads automatically. Send the request. We don't have any response just yet for this client, but let's see if we get somewhere here the ID. Right there. So you see, it's very hard to spot the specific places that the code is outputting stuff, but with a little bit of reflection about what you guys see here, you will find out that that's the ID. Now the rest, it's because we're not sending anything back to the client. We're going to do that now. Let's go to VS Code. 
and we're going to create a professional response. To do that, we're going to return, and I want to use the response object from Flask. So I will actually, from Flask, import the response as well. So we say, return the response. I will pass three arguments to this response. The first will be the response data. For now, let me just hard code a simple letter X, just that. Then I'm going to pass the status, which will be a 200 because I didn't have any mistakes. Everything run as expected. And then I will just pass the MAM type, which will be in this case, the application JSON. So I'm telling the client that I will pass some data. Everything went fine, that's in status 200. And I'm going to pass data that is JSON, but this is not JSON. So I want to pass data that looks like JSON is actually JSON. So my idea is to pass a message and the message will say user created. And I want to pass the ID of the user that was created. In this case, the ID is inside this variable. And this ID, I want to save you from a lot of headaches. This ID is a long ID and it is text. So therefore you need to put this as text. But this will not work because you need to inject this inside the double quotes. Therefore, you create an F string and then you just do the curly braces around the variable. Before we run it, or let's run it so we can see the box, the errors taking place. I will go to Postman, send the request, and we have this message ID popping up. This is not JSON, right? If you look at the headers, it says that it is expecting to get JSON. It is going to say JSON, but it actually sent the message ID. So we need to fix it. This has to be JSON and Flask has a nice function called JSONify. I'm not going to use it because it changes the order of my keys. So we just import JSON. If you like JSONify, just do it, but I will just import JSON. And what I will do is I will just JSON.dump the string and inside parentheses, let me just break this into lines so you can see the object. And this will be the JSON dump S, right? So the response will send this message and let me just do this like so. The status and the MAM type, save it. Go to Postman, click on send. And now we get that the user has been created and this was the ID and this is using a post. We can also check Compass, just reload. We have the company database created. We have users, five. Yeah, because I have been testing the application several times and these are my users. I will just delete them manually from Postman, delete, delete before I get too many users and I will delete the last one. So the blueprint has been working fine. And the last step we need to do for this tutorial is from Postman, we need to pass the name and the last name. To do that, since this is a post, we can go and look at the body from data. This is the important thing for us. We're going to create a key called name. We're going to pass the letter B and the last name will be BB. Do not send the request just yet. Let's go to VS Code. And now we're going to say that we want to get the request from the form and we want to get the key, the input field called name. And the exact same thing we'll do for the last name. Let me break this into lines so you can see the whole thing. The last name will be the request form and then the key that I called last name. When we send this, let's spot the bug. I'm going to do this in purpose again. I will just send it and we have a bug. 
and the bug here it's because I mean if I had if I was able to zoom out a little bit so you could make some sense out of it well the issue that we have is that it's trying to get a name and a last name but it's not using the correct library for it so you can just go ahead and read all of it I'm just telling you the answer already so what I will do is we go to let me just zoom it again as it was before let's go to VS Code and this request is not part of my imported packages so I will say that I want to import from Flask the response and also request save it the server restarted automatically let's send the request and now we say that the message has been created and this is the ID let's go to compass let's just refresh and now we can see that we have the new user inserted all right this is enough for this tutorial in the next tutorial i will show you how we can read not from Compass, but from Flask.